All right, so Green Bay. Uh, to me, uh, this story kind of starts at the offensive line here, um, but we can kind of take it back a step. Let's switch my notes here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> finished uh, third in the NFC North there, eight and nine. Fewest points allowed in the division, though. The defense is, is okay. That They have had some decent pass defense and the run defense was trash at times and and kind of waxed and waned a little bit but you know they their first pick was uh lucas van ness from from iowa there hopefully he can get them uh under under uh where un- <laughs> you know uh, keep keep them boys getting a little better pressure helps everything out we know know how uh, how much a pass rush really can uh, can save things for you um but really you know they they had a disappointing season last year which Seems to be, you know, it was a pretty tenuous from the jump. You had Rodgers who, you know, wasn't loving being there apparently. And disgruntled Rodgers is, you know, not the kind of Rodgers that you want. You know, you want, you want, you want New York Rodgers who's unbridled enthusiasm and is fine with working with the young guys. And then over here, you had Rodgers kind of just not showing up to really anything comes in. And then you got a bunch of young guys who he apparently didn't love that they, they went that route. Um, and, you know, it just it didn't seem like it was going to be great. And then he breaks the thumb, uh, which, you know, was tough all season long. It seemed like he just would be very up and down uh, throughout the season once that thumb injury kind of happened. Uh, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be just fine. I think excited, uh, you know, exuberant Aaron Rodgers over in New York, even if he's not MVP Aaron Rodgers, he just needs to be, you know, if he's just not he could be a game manager and the Jets are still going to be fine. So. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're a little bit bummed if you're a Packers fan, you're starting over. You, They're you, bummed that we're doing a Packers show and you're talking about Aaron Rodgers. I can right. tell you that. Well, I mean, we're recapping what, <laughs> what was going on last year. And some of those guys are probably pretty stoked. You know, if you're, if you're a fan, uh, you know, you were, maybe you wanted Rodgers out of the last year. Maybe you did want Rodgers out of there. And, and some of those fans are very fickle bunch. Um, and they own the team. Speaking so, of Wisconsin, Luke Fickle, now the head coach of Wisconsin Badgers. Boom. Uh, good tie in there, but you know, Rogers <laughs> out of there. Cue the Jordan Love era. We don't really know what we're gonna get. I think anybody who th- is gonna tell you that they think they know what they're what you're gonna get here is is lying to you. You, you saw the Packers draft, which is maybe where all the Rogers discourse kind of started. Draft uh, Jordan Love in the first round. He's been sitting for a little while. Years ago. Um, again, I, I don't I don't know exactly what we're going to get from Jordan Love, but I, I think it all starts with the offensive line here, um, which is is was overall third uh, in PFF last year with the finish in 22 mm. uh, coming into 23. They're at eighth. I'm not really sure how they make that, uh, you know, they like to grade declaration. each player and then um, they put out certain updates throughout the offseason and the end of the season and the start of the season. Right. So. But still, overall, you know, uh, third finish from last year. Bakhtiari and Elton Jenkins have uh, have just the left side locked down. Those guys have battled injuries over the last two years. Um, all by all intents and purposes and reports here, they seem very healthy. That that, that could be labeled as one of the best, strongest left sides uh, in all of football uh, through the offensive line. And, and we are doing these breakdowns, and we are going to mostly touch on the offensive side of the ball because this is a fantasy forward focused show here so uh but i always feel that talking about the offensive line especially in situations like this where we talked about kenny pickett and the steelers or i did on the on the discord show and and to me that's kind of how what's really going to be the basis of if love can actually have a fair shake at this thing um and again third overall in 22 eighth coming into the season uh the center josh myers that seems to be the uh point of potential volatility or contention um they have zach tom who could potentially slide into that center position um and then they have uh yash nyman um as the could slide into the right tackle and they had a third round pick last year sean ryan who was suspended all last year for ped usage uh which he can kind of play all along that interior as well um but right now penciled in uh behind jenkins for the left guard position uh royce newman at the right guard position and then zach tom penciled in at the right tackle position uh but again could slide to center if they don't like what they're seeing from josh myers seems to be the weakest link when you go over everything uh on that line and uh yash nyman then i don't think they would have a problem with him sliding in at the right tackle position um so that's kind of where you're at there then they have some some young big fellas uh kind of 
in holds with Rasheed Walker. Uh, he's he's six six. Uh, they have Caleb Jones. He's six nine, and Luke Tanuda maybe. Um, hey, just a quick question. What's Where that? did Rasheed Walker go to college? He did go to Penn State. Oh, okay, uh, just curious. He did. He did. Even he, if you didn't know, that's the answer. I knew. Uh, <laughs> he, he started at left tackle for a bunch of games there. So they they have they're they're, they, they're pretty excited about that younger group that they have there as well. So the offensive line seems to be in pretty good uh, shape moving forward, ushering in the Jordan Love era. And like I said and alluded to earlier, I think that's really what's going to be what is going to drive this team. And if they if they're going to have any success, slated at a seven and a half. Uh, over under win total um, I really think that that's what this is going to hinge on it's going to give you know while he should know the offense Jordan Love that is um, you know you can't really put a price tag on the amount of starts so it might take him a little bit to get comfortable we know there's raw ability there um, and when Aaron Rodgers is there you know the floor is probably going to you know, succeed to, to what Rodgers kind of wants to do. So maybe you'll see a little bit more of kind of LaFleur style and what he wants to do. You kind of have to, you know, it's Aaron Rodgers. You kind of got to let him do what he's going to do. Um, so 15th Green Bay was in, in, in rush attempts last year, 26.8 uh, per game. Uh, I think you could maybe even see that rise a little bit more. Actually, I was a little surprised at that number, but some of that could have been maybe a little banged up Rodgers and you do have a pretty good line. Um, and, Aaron Jones and Dylan were PFF's basically best duo in the league. Um, AJ Dylan was the fifth ranked running back with PFF's run grade, and um, Aaron Jones was the second rated uh, running back in their run grade. Uh, so, again, a really good tandem coming into there. I believe both guys are sort of in a contract year, one way or another, but it did seem like when we looked into it last time that. Uh, Aaron Jones was a little bit more actually secure than what Dylan had uh, going on. But by all intents and purposes, this is a, a, a pretty good lineup for Jordan Love. Like the receivers, you had Rodgers where he didn't want to get into it with those guys. Like he didn't come and show up. So this this is maybe best case scenario for the Packers. Like, you know, you alluded to when we were on the phone, like how could the Chiefs get better by losing Tyree Kill? I'm not saying by any means that, that the Packers are going to get better, but... You could have a more um, congealed group here where there isn't any too much contention between everybody. Hey, we're all in this together. Do I listen to Aaron Rodgers or Matt LaFleur? Right. Matt LaFleur's like, oh, I got to kind of default to Aaron Rodgers. Right. And you got now. a bunch of rookie wide receivers throughout there seeming maybe walking on eggshells because you don't want to piss drop off Aaron Rodgers. one Ro fucking right. thing. If I miss one step in a route, I'm never getting the ball thrown my way Right. Again. So for those guys, it's, it's really hard to say that it's going to be better if you don't have Aaron Rodgers. But just moving forward in the development of chemistry and camaraderie and, and team building, um, you know, I think this was the step that they that they kind of needed to make. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think it's going to be uh, interesting to see. I, you know, Jordan loves coming in at us for eight point four ADP. Um, so round eight, around the fourth pick ish. Um, I guess most of the times I'm not really looking at him, but I don't necessarily have a problem with Jordan Love. Uh, if you want to take a shot on him, I know some people are vehemently out on him. I don't. I feel indifferent either way. It really depends on how my team builds going. Um, I, I have. I could see times where I would run his ADP by me one more time. Uh, Eight point four. Okay. Um, so you that's know, his. That's his ADP. That's the, the draft round. That's the F to FD's ADP. Yep. Or at least what I had. But I think we just might have thrown two more drafts. We did just updated a little uh, bit when I did this sheet. But he's eight five now. You he's know, eight five. So it's basically, basically the, the same. same. Um, I'm I'm really okay with that. I mean. There's been times where I drafted Jordan Love. I mean, how 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 in or out could you possibly even really be on Jordan Love at this point? I know some people will say, well, since he didn't play, I'm out on him because that's the way we roll, or that's the way a lot of people roll in fantasy football. I'm not sure that that's necessarily fair. Um, if you're saying that you you haven't heard any buzz about him, and and you know there's really no nothing to to love about Love, and and they they kind of have to make this work, and yada yada yada. I look love at it as, as they're gonna probably he's probably gonna get two years here. <laughs> Yeah, they um, extended him to give him a little bit of, like, to ease right. the eggshells around him. Like, he, so, giving you a little extension. I'm okay taking the shot on him at that point if you're if you're a quarterback needy, if he's your third or, or even your second, and then you wanted to come back and grab a Stafford or something a little bit later. So you had kind of a mix of guys. I, I, I have no real problem with Jordan Love. Does anybody have strong feelings either way, either direction with Jordan Love here? No. Um, I, 
he won't be on my team ever, but he's out. Uh, he's out. Um, not not because it? I don't think he can, he can't succeed or can succeed. Um, I just like uh, looking at the draft board, like I almost every name that's around him, plus five, minus five, I'd rather have than Jordan Love, you know, if, I, if I'm drafting in a, in, in a season where I've already have an established roster, I don't see any reason why I would go, go get him. Like if I'm gonna, if I'm a veteran, going being a contender i'm not gonna go put a dice roll on him i'm gonna go put a dice roll on somebody else in that range like a like a car or, or somebody like that that has some veteran presence or even ritter i don't know where ritter is on this i, I just thinking Probably uh, a couple or mac jones later. with mac, the, uh, mac jones uh, is going similar to there let's say yeah. uh around later almost so if i in, inherited an orphan he's on my team and i'm in the middle of the road i'd i'd not looking to move them just to move them, but I'm I, I'm not looking to buy them either. I, after your recap, what that tells me, offensive line, Jordan Love, are they going to have a, not to bring the Seahawks into it, but are they going to have a Seattle-like atmosphere where the old veteran's gone now, so now the coaches can coach a little bit more? Um, that could definitely help. But what what I hear is improved offensive line, focus on you know um helping jordan love I, I i hear value at aaron jones right i hear value possibly at dylan but specifically aaron jones that's for me that'd be the person that i'm targeting um from uh from from the packers anyways uh, as far as yeah i mean like i said pff had those as the best duo aaron jones uh basically really had a career year um at just about uh a lot of uh, things across the board, most notably first uh, in yards for his career um, and first in receptions. This is like the, be the best two marks of his career for yards and receptions. So just like the two big counting stats. And then he was he had some missed tackles forced in there and, and a few other uh, categories. He was number one in his career at his 27, 28 uh, range. And then the TDs were just a little scarce. And, and Dylan uh, near the end of the season there, weeks nine to the end of the season, I believe out carried Aaron Jones. 14 to 5 inside the 10. Uh, so, you know, that could be a, potentially a little concerning for Aaron Jones uh, moving into the season. But still, even with the scarcity of touchdowns, he was awesome pretty much other than number nine in points per game with 248.6, 14.6 uh, PPR, or uh, sorry, uh, number 12 in points per game, 14.6, number nine in total points. Uh, 248.6 according to fantasy pros you know missed tackles force number seven in the league 53 yards per contact per attempt 15 3.20 3 yards per yards after contact uh number 15 6, 684 yards there uh yards per attempt number six in the league 5.3 uh eight eighth and overall yards uh and then 15th in attempts so you know just uh put together a really strong season uh with with you know Maybe I, I, I didn't have any idea that, that he put together a bunch of career numbers uh, throughout that season. 17-game um, season and, helps, too. Right. But, I mean, he played last year in a 17-game season. But, you know, they, they weren't – even if it's close to the career numbers, it's just, still – Just playing devil's advocate. Right. It's, they're still big numbers uh, for him to be putting up at the 27-28 range. Um, and it doesn't see, appear that he had really uh, lost a, a whole lot there. So – you he know. was a little inconsistent to own him. Some weeks he kind of killed you. Yeah. And some weeks he won you the weeks, which in a player that range, what do you expect? You know, right. great, great little RB2. You're, and if you're playing hero, decent RB1. Well, you're going to, he's going at 9.8 in the FFD uh, ADP, at least when I, again, did this sheet. So it's probably fairly similar one way or the other. Uh, so I think Jones has been a favorite of a lot of people in the industry uh right now up five spots to 9.3 um, 99 overalls you know you could have guys like dalvin cook or joe mixon uh instead of him if you're looking at the older running backs or you could get kendra miller and a chain which nine times out of ten i'm gonna take kendra um mm -hmm. but uh i do if my build was hey i have one really good rb and i'm feeling the rest of my team then i don't mind taking a shot on aaron jones i would most likely trade for aaron jones in season um, and not draft him, which is just kind of the way I've been going as of late to know if I'm a contender. So that way I don't have to deal with him uh, if I'm not a contender and I drafted him. Uh, but I think he's a very good option for, for your number two or a flex play uh, throughout the season here. And, and really liked, again, going over his, his numbers. It was, it was kind of staggering that, that he was you know, as good in a lot of these categories as, as he uh, 
ended the season on. And then A.J. Dillon on the other side, not quite as good, only 9.9 .9 points per game, uh, 26th in overall points, 167.6 put up seven touchdowns uh, and a lot a lot near the end of the season seemed to get better he was a little frustrated with his season uh, he wanted to uh, improve on his marks but again pff really liked him and i think this is going to be a duo that they lean on even more so i think that 15th uh, rush attempts per game could be in the i think that the green bay packers could easily be in the top 10 of rushes per game um, and these two guys uh, you know there there's not a much better duo uh, in the league there so i think maybe they lean on the run game a little bit more uh, moving forward. Um, and as far as Jordan Love goes, like if, if the Packers get hit this over under and, and are, are a nine win team, that probably means that Jordan Love's value is, is has gained quite a bit of steam at that point. Right. So I think that's really yeah. what's uh, the unknown is scary and exciting at the same time. I think the fact that a lot of those other quarterbacks that maybe you were mentioning there, like I don't think that any of those guys are really going to gain value. They've fallen in and out of favor with the public enough. I think Jordan Love, the spicy part about him is that, you know, he could potentially, you know, he'll probably wax and wane throughout the season. But if he has a couple of good seasons, the Packers are a, are a national attraction. They like to put him on uh, in, in big time spots when there's a lot of eyes. I think the positives for what the value could be outweigh the negatives. The negatives are then you know that we just don't know and it could be a fucking disaster uh so which i think that's pretty much the reason why you're kind of out right you're not you just don't want to the unknown is is not something you want to fuck with at that point yeah i typically am not i don't i don't draft um i don't draft the unknown i mean quarterback is where you're going to do that right you're going to draft the unknown to trade up or to trade out later you know and and or a step trade where you use love to to upgrade to something so i completely understand it but i just think in the eighth round there's still enough um there's still enough juice around that for me that i i, I don't feel like the the risk is worth the reward yeah for me personally gotcha. um I, I could be completely off. It's, you know, that's the beauty of the game, right? Sure. Everybody has different opinions and different, different views. Just for me, like I just kind of categorize them like Ritter. I'm, I'm not very high on Ritter. I think Ritter could have a great season. I think he could do some things, but at the same token, he's not the, he's not the Daniel Jones for me because I, I don't know the rushing for, for him. I'm, I'm not sure on the, the divisions are pretty tough. You know, there's some, very decent defenses and so yeah for me i just i i, I tend to uh, again I, I have no love for love i guess yeah is, is the, the division to. uh much tighter than the afc north that we did and yeah. lower totals it's you know bears 7.5 packers 7.5 vikings 8.5 and lions 9.5 win totals uh there so lower mm -hmm. than we were seeing with that afc south um Let's shoot. Well, and they've, got, Go ahead. they've got the AFC West, I think, in their schedule this year, if I, yeah. if I recall that. And so they, they've got some, you know, it, it's going to be a, a challenging, <laughs> a challenging uh, year for that division. So decent division. What so do you got? A little bit on Jordan Love. Uh, I don't think it's wrong to avoid Jordan Love, the unknown. We haven't seen anything from him except for some decent little preseason showings. And some connections with uh, with my boy Dubs, which I think we're, we're about to get to. But um, only 403 rushing yards in college for Jordan Love, so it's not like we can really point to to some legs. It could give us some juice. Did sign, I believe, a 22 million dollar extension uh, that basically is an extra year for 22 million. So not 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 a bad vote of confidence for someone who hasn't really played at all in the NFL. And it's unheard of for a guy to sit this long and be able to learn this much and learn from one of the greatest. It's exactly what like Aaron Rodgers did. Right. It's a great organization. I love the head coach. Offensive lines, bonkers. Good running game, good running scheme and running backs. Decent little young core of wide receivers. A couple of tight ends they drafted early. Tanya's out of there. Looking at the ADP. I don't, I don't hate it. I mean, I, I think I'd rather have love over Cam Akers. I don't think I can mess with Joe Mixon right now. Get rid of Derek Carr. I feel like he feels like on eggshells to me. Like at any point that could go off the rails. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't even think I want to mess with Derek Carr. Waller, I could see taking. I can see Deontay Johnson. I, I don't think I'm, I'm taking Calvin Ridley at that point. Kirk seems like a little bit of a reach there. I don't want Aaron Rodgers. I, I could, you could take Brock Purdy over Jordan Love. You know. We've seen sure. Brock Purdy win in the NFL, and it's probably going to have starting gig. Jordan Love tied with the with the Packers in this scheme and in this organization. 
I think it's probably worth the gamble in that range. Like I think it's probably properly rated. And third quarterback, absolutely. Second quarterback, because you have a stacked roster. Like you know, you're going to get a starter for two years. Well, yeah. So if, if he's the second, like I said, I'm coming back and grabbing like a Stafford, uh, or or sure. again, then the coming back through the next round and grabbing Mac Jones because I like I like yeah. Mac Jones a lot. And I wouldn't say I'm out on Derek Carr, but then we can we'll get to Derek Carr and that when we get to that division, um, we'll have that discussion. But I'm 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 I think he's underrated uh, as a quarterback. Uh, so. Uh, but yeah, let's. I'll wrap this up with you know moving to the receivers here. You have Romeo Dobbs, uh, Dubs, Dobbs, Dubs, Dubs, <laughs> um, and Christian Watson here. You know I, I I didn't get too carried away with these guys. I did go back and watch a little bit of them. Um, I said in the in the Monday live stream that I'm I'm gonna have a hard time not having Romeo on every team. Not that I don't already have him on a lot of teams. <laughs> That's right. Um, and Jesus, I, you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> um, it was a little loud. I just, I, I went back and watched Romeo and Watson. I, I, you know, I don't think there's much to be said on Watson. He's, he's proven that he's a pretty good player, fast, uh, big. Romeo, though. Um, Romeo, Romeo, where art thou Romeo? Right. On um, my team, baby. You know, 22% in the slot, 77% out wide, and then 67% out wide for Watson, 31% in the slot. And then they drafted uh, Jaden Reed who's probably projected as the slot. That's where he's been basically in OTAs the entire time. Um, he can kind of be a little versatile so that now they have three guys. Uh, Reed in college kind of split uh, inside and out. He seems like he was, you know, is going to be better, more served uh, for his first few years to be inside um, and, and not have to you know be a bound by the boundaries where Romeo and Watson, I feel like they can move all three of these guys around. They drafted two tight ends, so maybe they'll be in some 12 if they can make those guys, if they can be comfortable with both of those guys. Um, and, you know, gives you a better run set. Um, and, and both Kraft and Musgrave are extremely athletic guys, uh, Musgrave especially, uh, you know, especially. Uh, but Romeo, I'm going to have a hard time not having a ton of. The, the stats on both of these guys, to me, don't really matter all that much. It's completely irrelevant. Throw it out the like, window. We got a whole new quarterback here who's going to be yeah. doing all new things. I saw what I needed to see out of both of those guys last year. Watson can play. Romeo can play. And if, you know, Dubs was getting open, man. He was he was behind. Defenses. He was getting open. He was also getting behind defenses. Contested catches were, were really good. He just had some bonehead drops and some fumbles in those games. Uh, five drops uh, marked down in PFF, two fumbles. And then multiple times I saw him fumble and, and kind of recover. And you're like, oh, shit, quit fucking up. Or one of those turned into a drop because it wasn't necessarily a catch right now. 15.3 uh, ADP for the FFD ADP. Uh, week nine, high ankle, was out four games, um, and then never was really right coming back uh, from that necessarily. Uh, they were trying to get him in there because they needed to win some games. Only 7.8 points per game, 64 targets, 42 receptions, three touchdowns, 425 yards for him. But again, I could throw all this out the window, and you know, right now it's it's camp hype time, and you saw today uh, just you know multiple you know Terrace Marshall and. You know, I, I forget who else it was, but Romeo's been getting a lot of love. He's been getting a lot of love. And we talk about this all the time. When your quarterback changes, who's going to be their guy? And for all intents and purposes, it looks like Romeo is going to be Jordan Love's guy. And you alluded to it in the preseason. Jordan Love last year was already in on some Romeo. And now they're in there and they're, they're talking about how he's making steps forward. Um, I, I, I didn't. The NFL didn't look like it was too much for him right off the rip, Romeo. Um, so if Jordan Love is going to be the guy who's going to just be the guy who he targets heavily, uh, even at times when he shouldn't, then I, that's the guy I want to put on my team, even though I was fine with putting him on the team regardless. I think Watson will be just fine. Um, I'm probably not drafting Watson at the ADP. I'll, it's not I'll, cheap money. I'll let him slide. I'd rather have Jamison Williams or Traylon Burks. Um, all day. Crazy, Addison, crazy, give me all those rookies. Crazy to me that Jaden Reed's going ahead of Dubs right now. Two rounds ahead of Dubs. Right. And so... I think that's going to change. That's the sparkly new object. People don't like uh, and, Dubs. And, they don't want to get behind and Dubs. And he, you know, the metrics guys, the Mexican community, like some things about what, what he did. Reed got some love and got some decent draft capital. I got him somewhere at the end of the second, early third in, in my Superflex tight end premium rankings. I think to take the shot is fine if he turns into something awesome. Uh, but Romeo, I came away with, will probably be my highest rostered packer. 
here. And then AJ Dillon has been a guy I've been crushing uh, because of the way I've been drafting uh, in a lot of in a lot of drafts. I think I believe that was eleven. Let me flip back to my yellow. What league percentage league. of your portfolio would be eleven um, five? Eleven. I had him at eleven seven, so he's moved up a little bit. Probably because me and JMW have been drafting the fuck out of that guy uh, in a lot of our because we're, we're we're going a lot of. Uh, maybe just one RB and then coming back and grabbing the Dillons and stuff later. I think he's a guy, if there's an injury or it could just really kind of take over and score and touchdowns uh, potentially. And, you know, had a good receiving year the year before. And then last year it was just okay. It wasn't great. Drops, dropped some balls, man. So, we, we were in the draft Patreon three or whatever. And yeah. We were, couldn't decide between a, a slew of guys there. And I, I was trying to make a push for A.J. Dillon. I was going back watching some cut-ups and some highlights, and he was wiling out. And then last year, to start off pretty much like, I don't know if it was like half the year or what, but it was, you mentioned you referenced week nine and on. Before that, it was hot trash. Like, he wasn't doing yeah. anything. And yeah. then all of a sudden, towards the end of the year, he starts having those bowling ball runs where you see him, people bouncing off of him and him getting open like yeah, he's, he's in the receiving that. game. That, that nimble guy with such a large frame to be able to receive like that, it's just... It's a thing of beauty when he gets it going, and, and there must have been something not right to begin the year, you know? It just the whole thing could have been just a little off. It was tenuous to go in. So, you know, I think he's a little bit of a kind of – he was hyped up a good bit last year, and I feel like people are sort of out, which is a reason why, mm. you know, that's a guy that I start stabbing on a lot because he does kind of fade down to the to those end of the mid-tier uh, rounds there, 11-12, and I think, you know, there's some good value there of a, of a bounce back, especially there's TD upside, standalone. You saw what that could – just TDs alone can do for Jamal Williams, uh, and I think A.J. Dillon is a better player than Jamal Williams. Um, so A lot of running backs are better play, players right. than Jamal Williams. Um, you know, and as far as Christian Watson, like I said, good player, five drops for him. Um, but I think you have, uh, you know, concussion week eight, Missed part of week five and then miss missed six and seven concussed week eight. So, you know, had had some banged up times, had had an injury to start the season off. Uh, then the big drop right in the first game of the season, I believe that was. Um, yeah, I think it was the first play of the game. Yeah. And then came back and, and had had a nice little resurgence. There's nothing against Watson. I just don't love the ADP currently for us. It's five point eight. Maybe it's a little different on exactly what's up there. Uh, but again good player uh i'll take i'll take dubs and dylan on this team right now seem to be um, five five nine currently some of my favorites so let's wrap up the packers here you guys want to get out of here get to the next set of uh of players yeah. let's do it oh i had one one little prop here to end uh watson is for to 1500 plus receiving yards is plus 25 hundo so if you're if you're a watson believer wait what was the wait what was it that sounds like a lot 1500 plus receiving yards is plus 2500 that's not happening well the his over under for the season is 750 and a half yeah 750 i feel comfortable with that not 1500 and the over is minus 130 on that one yeah. so well, plus 2500 that's that's good Yes. Plus 25, <laughs> well, it's 1,500. That's, I mean, that's shit. bet 100 Jordan, to win 2,600. Jordan loves only uh, over-unders like 3,300 yards. So 30, like, I got him at 33,505. That'd be more than five like point five. almost half of his yards would go to Watson. 21 and a half touchdowns. I'm saying that that happens. You're taking the over on the 750? Yeah, I think so. That's minus 130, so there's a little, you know, people that they like that. Yeah. To, to happen, so you got to pay a little more. All right. All right, let's get out of here. Let's uh, shoot over to the Bears. 